This is section 11.5, part 4. And for the rest of this section, we're going to be looking at a specific type of vector-valued function. Specifically, the vector-valued functions that give us equations of straight lines. So let's look at linear vector-valued functions, and we'll look at both the two and the three-dimensional forms. So we're going to use as our example the line y equals 2x minus 3. And I'd like to start just by drawing a good graph of that line that we can refer to for some geometry as we go on. So let's see, our y-intercept is negative 3, our slope is 2, and there's my line. All right, the first thing we're asked to do is find a vector-valued function that has this line as its graph. So I'm going to use the same technique we've been using. I'm going to say let's let x equal t, and we'll let y then be 2t minus 3. And since right now I'm talking about the whole line going on forever in both directions, I won't limit my t values. t can go from negative infinity to infinity. This means I can now write the vector-valued function r of t as t comma 2t minus 3. All right, next direction say using algebra, rewrite the equation, separating the terms with the parameter from the terms without it. I'm actually just going to continue right up here. So I'm going to say the terms with the parameter would be t in the x and 2t in the y, plus the terms without the parameter would be 0 for the x and negative 3 for the y. I'm going to go ahead and factor out the t from this first one. which is going to give me t times the vector 1, 2, plus 0, negative 3. Let's take a good look first at this vector 1, 2. Does that vector have anything at all to do with our line? Well, of course it does. If you look at any of the two points that I marked when I was kind of marking the slope on the line, the vector from any one of them to the next goes over 1 and up 2. So that's the vector 1, 2. It just doesn't happen to be in standard position. And that, of course, would be true between any two points on this line. All right, what about this vector over here? 0, negative 3. Well, of course, that actually is the y-intercept of this graph. As a vector, it's the vector that points to that y-intercept. And essentially, if we think of this as kind of like a starting point, 0, negative 3, and then we imagine taking the 1, 2 vector and just adding a copy of it, we get to this next point on the line. And if we add another copy, we get to the next point, and another copy, and so on, we could add t equals 1 copy, or t equal 2 copies, or t equal 3 or 4 copies of that 1, 2 vector to point out additional points on the line. Of course, if I used fractional or decimal values of t, I would get all of the other points in between as well. I'd also like to point out there's nothing special about that point 0, negative 3, other than it's somewhere on the line. I could have actually started at any point. I could have started at another point, like, you know, way down here somewhere and started adding copies of 1, 2 to move my way along this line. So it doesn't have to be the y-intercept. It can actually be any point on the line. What we normally do is we think of this as what we call the direction vector. Because it points out the direction of the line. 
it's the vector equivalent of the idea of slope. We don't actually call it slope, we use the language direction vector instead. But it definitely fulfills that idea. It points the direction of the line. And then this is going to be my starting point on the line. Because notice that when t is 0, the whole first term goes away. And we start at t equals 0 at that point. So I actually did all the work that was meant to be here, up here. I'm going to go to the bottom. If we were to write this as sort of a general idea, what do we have to know to write the equation of a line? Well, we did this in two space. But we could extend these ideas to three space and do the same thing. We would need to know a direction vector pointing out the direction of the line. We'll call that V. And we need to decide on a starting point. Again, it doesn't have to be any special point, doesn't have to be an intercept or anything like that. It's just any point on the line. Let me call that P. Then the equation of the line R of T is just going to look like T times that direction vector. Oops, I called it V. T times the direction vector V plus the vector that connects the origin to the point P. So I'll just call that OP. And that's how we'll find our equation of a line in either two space or three space. That is made more formal for you, just in the box at the top of the next page. It's written in two and three dimensional form, but it says what we just talked about. So let's try a couple of examples. In example one, I've got the points P and Q, 2, 3, and negative 1, 5. And it says to find four different vector equations for the line PQ. Let's just start by graphing it. 2, 3, there's P, and negative 1, 5, there's Q. So I'm looking at that line that runs through those two points. All right, equation one. I need a direction vector and a starting point. Now, it didn't specifically say that we're going from P to Q or vice versa, from Q to P. So I can pick my direction vector either way. For this first one, let's do the vector direction vector going from Q to P. So my direction vector v then, I'm going to put the coordinates in here just to make the subtraction a little easier. If I take terminal minus initial, v is going to be 3. Uh, 3 minus 5 would be negative 2. Okay. For my starting point, I can pick any point on the line. It doesn't matter. Now, I've drawn it as though I'm starting at Q. So let's go ahead and choose Q this time as our starting point. And I'll make the vector OQ. So I'll turn that into a vector, negative 1, 5. And if I just put these pieces together then, R of T is T times that direction vector. Oops, let's start a little bit. So it's always t times the direction vector, t times 3, negative 2, plus the vector that we made out of the point, op, or in our case, oq. And if I just do a little bit of algebra to get this in standard form, the x component will be 3t minus 1. And the y component will be negative 2t plus 5. So there's one of the four possible vector equations that I can get easily here. The second one, 
I'm going to continue to see, use the same direction vector, but I'm going to imagine using P as my starting point instead. So essentially, instead of my vector here, I'm going to imagine that same vector translated down here. So same V, but this time, instead of the starting point being Q, I'll use P as the starting point. So OP becomes the vector 2, 3. That means that my R of T is T times that same direction vector plus the new vector from the starting point, 2, 3. And a little bit of algebra gives me 3t plus 2 and negative 2t plus 3 for my x and y components. So there's a second equation that still describes that exact same line. It's just imagining that we're starting at a different point on it. But again, with negative t values, we could go back this way as well as that way. So it's the exact same line. All right, for 3 and 4, I'm going to use a different direction vector. Instead of thinking of my direction vector as running from Q to P, what if I think of my direction vector as running the other way? From P to Q. So now my direction vector, terminal minus initial, is negative 3, 2. Uh, the way I have it drawn right now, it starts at P, so I'm going to go ahead and use OP to get the starting point for the first time, 2, 3. But again, it doesn't really matter. You can use any point on the line. And so putting these together, the equation of my line is T times my direction vector. plus the direction, or the vector that I got from my point, 2, 3. So I'm going to get negative 3t plus 2, and then 2t plus 3. So, so far we've got three different looking equations, but they all refer to the same line. One more. I'll keep that same direction vector v, but again, I can use any point on the line. So let's start from the point q this time. We're kind of imagining that we're going back that way, another copy of v. So I'll use oq to represent my starting point. And that would be negative 1, 5. So last one here, r of t, t times that same direction vector, negative 3, 2, plus I'm now going to consider negative 1, 5 as my starting point, and that'll give me negative 3t minus 1 and 2t plus 5. So just like when you studied parameterizations and you learned that there was more than one way to parameterize a line, you can see that the same is true for vector-valued equations of a line. Here's four different vector-valued equations, all representing that same line. We can manipulate these to our advantage to cause us to go in one direction or the other along the line, or to have a different starting point, but ultimately they all refer to the same line. The other thing that I can do is I can modify my t values so that I only use a certain piece of the line. And you'll see that if I only want the line segment PQ, not the whole line, what I can do is just limit the t values to get that. So let's just pick one of them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and as long as it's handy here, I'm going to use this last one. If I'm choosing to use the form r of t equals negative 3t minus 1, 2t plus 5, 
I only want the line segment from P to Q. P is 2, 3, and Q is negative 1, 5. Notice that if T is 0, that gives me negative 1, 5, right? If the T values are 0. So this corresponds to T equals 0. <clears throat> what does this correspond to? Well, let's see. If I just set this first one, negative 3t minus 1, the x value equal to 2, negative 3t would be 3, and t would be negative 1. So now that I know the t values that p and q correspond to, I can limit my t values to negative 1 to 0, and that's going to give me just the line segment rather than the whole line. Okay. I could have done that with any of those. And by the way, I chose to do it for the x component, but notice that same negative 1 would give me 3 in the y component. You can set the equation up for either x or y. It'll work for either one when you're trying to solve for the t value that you need. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. I would like an equation for the line parallel to PQ, the line that we just finished working with, that also contains the point for negative 1. Let's see if I get that to focus just a little better here. That's going to be a little better. All right, so parallel lines. We know from algebra that parallel lines have the same slope. When we're talking about vector-valued functions, parallel lines are going to have the same direction vector. Right? If I took this vector and just slid it this way and made another vector parallel to it, I would have a whole parallel line with that new direction vector. So I'm going to say the fact that I want my lines to be parallel means I'm going to use the same direction vector. Now this is a whole line, not just a piece of a line or in any particular direction, so it really doesn't matter which of these I use. I'll just go ahead and use 3, negative 2. We also know we want to contain the point R for negative 1. So this time, instead of OP or OQ, I'll make a vector OR for negative 1. And that means that my vector equation, R of t, is t times the direction vector, 3, negative 2, plus that vector from the point. 4, negative 1, which is 3t plus 4, negative 2t minus 1. By the way, notice that if you wanted to graph that line, it wouldn't be too difficult. We could go to the point 4, negative 1, right here, and then just draw the direction vector. We've got to go over 3, I have to go over to 7 here, and down 2. To get to another point on the line, and then of course you could just extend further in both directions to keep going. All right, let's try example 3. This time I'd like the vector equation for a three-dimensional line, AB, given the points, oops, that's got to be A and B, not Q. Sorry about that. Given the points A and B. And then we'll see about sketching the graph of that line. That might be more than I want to do right now. We could maybe use maple. We'll see. Um, first of all, in order to find the vector and equation of a line, I always need two things. I need a direction vector and a point. So let's start with a direction vector. To get a direction vector, I'll just use the vector AB. So I'll take the terminal minus the initial. Uh, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. 
3 plus 1 would be 4, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And again, it really doesn't matter which point I use as my starting point. Maybe I'll go with OB this time, just because I like those positive numbers. 3, 3, 1. So the equation of my line, R of t, always t times the direction vector, plus the vector that came from the point, and a little bit of algebra gives me negative 3t plus 3, 4t plus 3, and negative 3t plus 1 for the equation of that line. And I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and not try to graph this by hand. It's so hard to get the perspective right. Over in Maple here, I've done the width plots and the width vector calculus. And we'll graph this, even though it's a straight line, still going to be called a space curve. And the equation of the line that we came up with was negative 3t plus 3, comma 4t plus 3, comma negative 3t plus 1. And let's see, let's just take our t's from um, negative 4 to 4. And I'm going to put my axes to normal and make this red. Oops, and I'm going to have to move this over just a little bit so you can see the line. There it is. And we can see our line graphed there. A lot better perspective than I could have done by hand. All right, I'm going to get rid of maple and we'll go back to our by hand work. We have just a couple more examples. I know this is getting a little long, but let's see if we can squeeze in our last two examples on this video before we get to the geometry in the last video for this section. It's a long one, I know. All right, we want the equation in example four for the line TR parallel to this given line and given this point R, 2, 8, 7. Now, as far as the direction vector, once again, we know that parallel lines mean that they can have the same direction vector. Same vector just shifted is still going to be parallel. So let's start by saying our direction vector is actually going to be this W that's given. We usually call it V, so I'm just going to rewrite it. V is going to be 2, negative 1, 1. And the given point this time is R, so we'll make a point vector OR, 2, 8, 7. And so my linear equation is going to look like t times that direction vector, 2, negative 1, 1, plus the OR vector, 2, 8, 7, or just 2t plus 2, minus t plus 8, and t plus 7. All right, we've got one more to go here. In example five, we want the equation of the line orthogonal to the lines a, b, and t, r from the previous examples. The new orthogonal line also has to contain this point, one, two, three. So the point vector is going to be no problem, right? If I call that p, then I already know o, p. That one's easy. It's just going to be one, two, three. I am going to have to work a little bit harder for my direction vector this time. The direction vector has to be orthogonal to both of these lines. TR, the example we just finished, had a direction vector of 2, negative 1, 1. So it has to be orthogonal to 2, negative 1, 1. And it also has to be orthogonal to the direction vector from the line AB. That was this example that we just did. 
that direction vector was negative 3 for negative 3. All right, how can I find a vector orthogonal to two vectors that I know? That's a cross product, isn't it? If I were to take the cross product of these, that result would be orthogonal to both and could therefore be used as my vector v. So I'm going to go ahead and do my cross product. Let's see, I have 3i minus 3j plus 8k. And then we'd have to subtract 3k plus 4i minus 6j. So let's see, 3i minus 4i would be negative 1 for the x's. Negative 3 plus 6 would give me a positive 3 in the y values. And 8 minus 3 would give me 5 for the z's. All right, got my direction vector, got the op vector, I'm good to go. R of t, t times that direction vector. plus the vector from the point. Gives me the vector equation minus t plus 1, 3t plus 2, and 5t plus 3. And we are all set. All right, so that's finding equations of lines. Again, it boils down to finding a direction vector, and a starting point factor. And from there you just put it together. We will finish this section up finally in the next video.